All right, so I feel like myself and the rest of the tech here on YouTube have covered Samsung's Galaxy S23 Ultra to absolute death. So it's time to show a bit of love to its slightly less expensive siblings, the Galaxy S23 and the Galaxy S23 Plus. One of them's big, one of them's not quite so big. They're both powered by that beefy Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 as also found crammed inside of the S23 Ultra. And they come back in some pretty premium specs, but also a rather hefty price tag. So let's whip them out the box, take you on a full on tour and do a side by side comparison. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So first up, and I get the feeling this bit won't take long, what do you get in these teeny boxes? Well, you get your choice of Samsung Galaxy S23 smartphone. You got a porky pin device to stick your SIM inside. You got a quick start guide and some other paper guff and a USB cable. And yeah, as usual, that's it. No frills, no flare, no plastic covers or actual adapters or anything. There you go, that was easy. All right, so here we have the Galaxy S23 and the S23 Plus. No mixing these two up because there is quite a sizable difference between them. They are very much the little and large of the smartphone world. Galaxy S23 pleasingly hand-friendly at 6.1 inches. One of the only compact handsets you'll be able to bag yourself in 2023 compared with the 6.6 inch Galaxy S23 plus more of a standard smartphone size. But once you get past those different dimensions, the design is very similar on the S23 and the Plus. They both feature a perfectly flat display rounded in the corners. And those edges aren't completely flat, they are ever so slightly rounded. They actually feel quite comfortable to clutch but especially the regular S23 with its pleasingly miniature form. Even I, with my stubby fingers, can just about use this thing one-handed. You do actually have a dedicated one-handed mode on both of these blowers too. And both the S23 and that Plus model are pretty hardy buggers as well. You've got Gorilla Glass Victus 2 up front protecting that display and around on the arse end too. And sandwiched in between those two plates of glass is some armor aluminium. And the good news is that Victus 2 screen and rear end has definitely done the job on the Galaxy S23 Ultra. A couple of weeks on, still no scratches anywhere on that thing. And that includes the armor aluminium frame as well. So touch wood, the Galaxy S23 and S23 Plus should also stay completely mark free. So stay tuned for my full review to find out. Now, thankfully, while it is glass around back, Samsung has at least gone for a matte finish, which seems pretty resistant to grimy, greasy fingerprints. Just give these blowers a bit of spit and polish occasionally and they'll be looking box fresh. I've got to admit, I did prefer the design on last year's Galaxy S22 series with that lovely camera cutout section. In comparison, just having those camera lenses poke straight out of the arse like this just looks a bit bland. Still, I do like the colours that Samsung has gone with. You can pick up both of these blowers in the same hues, Phantom Black, Cream, Green and Lavender. The cream and black models are perfectly nice. This is the cream Galaxy S23 Ultra, just for comparison purposes. Look at how much of a monster it is. It's so much bigger even than the Plus. The lavender has its charms as well, but I really like the green. I think that's my favorite new Galaxy color. Goes quite nicely with my desk plants. And both the regular Galaxy S23 and the S23 Plus pack plenty of recycled materials as well as you can kind of feel like you're saving the planet by upgrading. And they're both IP68 water and dust resistant. So now let's have a shifty at the software and unsurprisingly it's identical on the Galaxy S23 and the S23 Plus. You're basically running the latest greatest Android 13 with Samsung's very own One UI 5.1 launcher slathered on top. If you've used a Samsung smartphone in recent times you'll know exactly what to expect. One UI packs in lots of Samsung exclusive features, most of which are basically just replicas of stuff you already get in Android. You've got Samsung Health, you've got an internet browser, you've got something to control your smart home goodies. You've got a voice assistant, albeit one that's not quite as good as the Google Assistant. And you've got lots of extra bonus bits chucked on top of Android. So for instance, the modes and routines section. That's a damn good way of automating lots of stuff on your smartphone. You've got some bonus always on display options. Absolutely tons of widgets. But anyway, I've already discussed the best bits of One UI 5.1 in my full Galaxy S23 tips and tricks guide. That is live right now. 17 minutes of absolute delight. So definitely go check that out if you want to know more about the software. And both the regular Galaxy S23 and the S23 Plus offer a choice of 256 or 512 gigs of storage. Plus there is a smaller 128 gig option for the Samsung S23. However, as you will see, if you yank open the SIM tray on either of these blowers, there's no room in there for micro SD memory card, only two SIM cards. And both Galaxy S23 phones also support eSIM if you'd rather go that route. 
Now, when it comes to the display tech, the only difference between these two Samsung blowers is the size. You've got a 6.6-inch AMOLED display here on the Galaxy S23 Plus model, compared with the weenie little 6.1-incher on the regular S23. But both of them boast a full HD plus resolution, 2340 by 1080 pixels. So technically, the Galaxy S23's display is sharper than the plus size model. Either way, you're getting a gorgeous picture. Certainly on the max style brightness, you'll have no trouble seeing exactly what is going on, even on a very sunshiny day. You got full support for HDR 10 plus content on here, but no love for Dolby Vision on either phone. And I've got to say, that supported HDR content looks absolutely stunning. Such lifelike images. And even though it's not quite as crisp here on the Plus model, it's still perfectly sharp. Fine details packed into every frame. Samsung has packed in the Advanced Vision Booster feature as well, which can tweak the colour and contrast of that display more effectively to suit the ambient lighting in your room. So everything is nice and clear and easy on your peepers. And you've also got an adaptive refresh rate on both of these Galaxy S23 blowers, which ranges from 48Hz all the way up to 120Hz. So if you're just kicking back with a movie or just browsing some photos, for instance, it will drop down to those lower levels. Whereas if you're playing a game that supports 120Hz refresh, it will be boosted all the way up. And both Galaxy S23 phones sport a stereo speaker setup complete with Dolby Atmos and Bluetooth 5.3 support. But just how good all those speakers? Is there a clear difference between the S23 and the Plus model? Let's find out. So first up, the regular Galaxy S23. Samsung's Galaxy S23 smartphones are hit in the UK this week. And as always, One UI 5.1 is as dense as that Musk fella. Packed to the p And now the Plus model. Galaxy S23 smartphones are hit in the UK this week and as always One UI 5.1 is as dense as that Musk fella packed to the pits with So yeah perhaps unsurprisingly the Galaxy S23 Plus has the more powerful stereo speaker output because it's got more room to work with Certainly louder on that maxed out volume although still not amazingly blasting you in the face powerful at least neither is particularly tinny once you do max out that volume. You've got no headphone jack action on either, so it is Bluetooth streaming all the way if you want to get some headphones or speakers on the go. And here's that awesome tips and tricks guide I was telling you about. Definitely go check that out after this video, of course. So let's glide our way onto performance. And Samsung has stuffed the same chipset into both the Galaxy S23 and the S23 Plus. It's Qualcomm's latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. And that's backed in both of my review models by 8 gigs of RAM, which is kind of meager compared with what some rivals are stuffing inside of their phones. We're talking like 12, 16 gigs, but whatever. But interestingly, even though it's the exact same chipset power in both the Galaxy S23 and the S23 Plus, they've got the exact same amount of memory. I have found that in Geekbench 6, the Plus consistently outperforms the regular Galaxy S23. Not by a huge margin by any means, but as you can see, a slight uplift in the single and the multi-core scores. And I've run this test multiple times now, there's always a slight uplift. So presumably it just comes down to the Snapdragon not being quite as efficient in that more compact frame. But the general everyday performance nice and smooth on both of these smartphones. And yes, if you are a gamer, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 can ably handle even the most demanding fare out there like Genshin Impact, even when you boost it all the way up to the maximum graphical settings. Just to be absolutely sure, of course, I did smash my way through a good bit of Genshin on both the regular S23 and the Plus model as well. And yeah, even with an hour-ish of action on both of these handsets, they both coped admirably. No noticeable drops in those frame rates, and they both stayed relatively cool as well. But of course, please do come back for my full in-depth Galaxy S23 and my S23 Plus review to see how that performance holds up over time with everyday use. And yeah, Samsung does offer up a basic gaming mode on all of its Galaxy smartphones, which does give you the priority mode so that can dedicate all the resources to the game and make sure you're not disturbed in the middle of some really frantic action. Now, Samsung has managed to increase the battery size in both of these Galaxy S23 blowers, even though the dimensions remain more or less the same as the previous generations. You've got a 3,900 mAh cell in the regular S23 and a 4,700 mAh cell here in the Galaxy S23+. Plus. So yeah, fair enough, only a small increase in the capacity for both of these batteries. But bear in mind that the previous S22 generation that I reviewed here in Blighty was powered by a Samsung Exynos chipset that turned out not to be particularly energy efficient. In comparison, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 has been holding up really well on that front. So I'm hoping the change in chipset as well as the slightly increased size for the battery means greater longevity for both of these blows. In particular, the Galaxy S23, because the S22 Plus was fine anyway. That S22 from last year, my God, if you lasted a day, you were lucky. 
Either that you just left it wedged firmly in your pocket all day long. And it's the same wired and wireless charging tech on both these handsets as well. So not particularly nippy when you do plug them in, but to be fair, especially here on the S23, it's not a massive battery anyway, so it won't take long to charge. So let's finish up this unboxing with the squint at the camera tech. And while the Galaxy S23 Ultra sported all new hardware around back, unfortunately here on the regular S23 and S23 Plus, it is recycled camera tech from last year. So what we're dealing with here is that self same 50 megapixel shooter from last year, once again with optical image stabilization. And both Galaxy S20 phones also dish up a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter if you want a more pulled back view of the action as well as a 10 megapixel telephoto shooter, and that's with a three times optical zoom. And here's just a few sample shots that I've snapped with the Galaxy S23 and S23 Plus in my first 48 hours. There seems to be no discernible difference in the photo quality between the two, as you'd expect, as it's the same hardware and software. And I can't really notice much difference compared with the previous generation, to be honest. In low light, definitely not as good as that Ultra model, and any moving subjects will often come out blurry as well. But anyway, stay tuned for a full in-depth review to see how the Galaxy S23 and S23 Plus camera tech really stacks up. And you've got the same set of bonus modes on here as well, including a bit of portrait shenanigans, which as you can see uses the telephoto lens by default. And all the usual extra Samsung bits as well, including the obligatory food mode. You've got a night mode as well for those low light shots, though this is active by default in auto mode. You've got the single take, which I rather like if you've got kids or cats or whatever. And you can also access the expert raw mode directly through the camera modes now. And with this, you've got the option of shooting in 12 megapixels or using all full 50 megapixel bits of action from that sensor. Sorry, I can't even form sentences anymore. And if you like to shoot a bit of video, well, that's one area where Samsung smartphones usually excel. And as usual, it's in Full HD by default. You can boost that up to Ultra HD 4K at 30 or 60 frames per second. And you've now also got the option of shooting 8K at 30 FPS. And again, here's just a quick look at some of the sample 8K footage that I shot using the S23 and the S23 Plus in the first sort of 48 hours. And again, stay tuned for my in-depth review for a full analysis. And last up, flip around to the front, the Galaxy S23 and the S23 Plus both serve up a 12 megapixel selfie shooter with wide angle action. Look at that, such a difference it makes. And the selfie camera seems to hold up well, even in really bright light and in dim light as well. Seems to do a good job of locking onto your face and keeping you sharp. Bit too much detail, if anything, in fact. And cool blimey governor, if you want to shoot a bit of vlog action with that selfie snapper, well, you can shoot up to 4K resolution video at 30 or 60 frames per second. Again, bit of a blinder. Audio pickup, perfectly acceptable, as you would expect. And there you have it, my lovelies. There's my unboxing and full tour of the Samsung Galaxy S23 and S23 Plus. And as you can see, beyond the dimensions and the obvious increase in battery capacity, not exactly much between them at all. Oh, that and maybe a couple of hundred quid as well, I guess. So what do you reckon? Are you tempted by either of these lovely Samsung handsets? Which one would you go for and why? Stay tuned for my in-depth reviews. I've already got my SIM card slapped into the regular S23 and I'm hoping to bring you a review of the Galaxy S23 Plus at some point too. In the meantime, please do slap your comments below, poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a ruddy wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.